Hi everybody, this is Jeff from Missouri Wind and Solar and this is part one of a series of videos I want to do of how to cut your electric bill in half or at least up to 30 percent. I'm not going to sell you anything, there's no ebooks to buy or anything to purchase from me. And this is just totally free information and things you can do yourself to cut your electric bill by up to as much as half. A lot of people have already done it and responded to me and said they've actually cut their electric bill 30 to 50 percent. And these are just things um, that I had picked up over the years. And I used to be an appliance repairman for about 25 years, so I know a lot about appliances. And I'll start by showing you some of the fastest ways you can cut your electric bill in half by yourself. Um, whether you go wind or solar, or whether you don't want to go wind or solar at all. But, before you decide to go wind or solar, the best thing to do is to get your electric bill down first. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do. You won't need as much equipment. You won't need nowhere near as much equipment. So what I'm going to do is start out with a lot of basic stuff that people probably already know, and then I know a lot of you don't know. So I'll just start and uh, show you some ideas. There's actually several different shower heads out there on the market and I'll tell you why you might want to change from the one that you got now to uh, another one. And for instance, this is typical shower head. This uses 10 gallons of water per minute. This is a water saver shower head and this uses one and a half gallons of water. Okay, the difference is, uh, this one is going to get you just as clean as this one does. This is the one that I use in our house. And it's made by Peerless. And it pulsates. It puts out high pressure. This one doesn't. Okay. Here's what's going to happen. If you switch from this shower head immediately, and any of you can do this, this is one and a half gallons per minute. So what's going to happen? You start taking a shower. Big complaint, I ran out of hot water. Well, think about it. This shower head is using 10 gallons per minute of your hot water. All right? As soon as you start taking a shower, your water heater kicks on. Your water heater is probably the biggest consumer of the electricity in your home. Now. You get rid of this, go to the 1.5 gallon per minute, and your water heater will hardly turn on at all. You will not need a larger water heater. Um, that's something else that people complain about. I need a larger water heater. No, you don't. You're dumping too much water. Think about it. Two five gallon pails of water with this per minute. One and a half gallons with this head. Okay, if you've got a water well, <coughs> and you decide you want to keep this shower head, not only is your water well going to kick on and off and kick on and off, but your water heater is going to be running constantly, trying to keep up with the water usage you have. There you go. Go to this head. Your water well pump will run very little, saving you electricity right off the bat, and they're not cheap to run. Cut down on your water heater electric. What we've got here is a regular incandescent bulb. This bulb is 75 watts. Pretty much when you turn it on, it's going to use 75 watts immediately. Now, here we've got another light bulb. These are the compact fluorescents. Now, if you get the wrong type of compact fluorescent, it's going to put off an orange light. And uh, I never get those. I get the soft white, or I get the natural daylight uh, compact fluorescence. This is equal, this bulb here is equal to say a 60 watt incandescent light bulb. And remember when you turn this on you're going to be using 60 watts. This incandescent is 13 watts. Okay, so you're going to be able to run about five of these light bulbs to one incandescent. Now then, you want to get even a cheaper light bulb. Top rate. This is an LED light bulb. And I got this thing and it works beautiful. 
I mean, it's nice. This is cheaper to run than the incandescents. And this one here uses 10 watts. 10 watts is all it does to equal a 60 watt bulb, right? This LED will last for years. So can you imagine this? You turn on one of these bulbs in your house, just one room, say you're using 60 watts. You can have five of these turned on using the same amount of power. You can have roughly eight of these turned on at the same time. And I know if you've got kids, they all run through the rooms and leave lights on. You can run eight of these for the cost of this. And you say, yeah, these cost more. Well, uh, your electric bill costs a lot more than the bulbs do. Now, you want to see something even cheaper. I don't have the bulb, just the box. But check this out. This is a new LED that I just got. And this LED is cheaper to run than this LED. Let me, t let me tell you about it a little bit. This LED is designed to last 30 years. It uses 5 watts. It equals a 60 watt light bulb. Can you imagine that? This uses 5 watts. You can run a uh, 150 watt incandescent light bulb, one of these. I should take this out of the box. Uh, this is an incandescent regular light bulb. You can run 10 of these new LEDs to one of these lights in your house. Can you imagine how much your electric bill will drop if, say, you're really not even turning on lights anymore? So this is a nice bulb. It's been tried and tested. It's Infinity LED. And you can use this in a dimmer. This one can be dimmed. Now, a lot of them cannot. Now, to give you an example of what I'm talking about with the uh, compact fluorescence, this one here that I'm pointing at right now has an orange tint to it, kind of an orange yellowish tint. Well, that's a, that is a cheap compact fluorescent light bulb uh, that you get at Walmart. And that's the color it puts out. It's horrible. Now next to it is a natural light compact fluorescent bulb. Natural daylight. And is extremely bright. Puts off a really beautiful white light. It's not that orange horrible color that people say they can't stand. If you'll notice the difference in the lenses the one is lit up white on the left, and the one on the right has that yellow tint. You want to cut your electric bill even further? A standard vacuum cleaner, when you turn it on, uses 20 amps. Now that's 20 amps. What we use at my house most of the time is called an iRobot. This one here is a B robot. It's a knockoff of the iRobot plugs into a wall outlet, turn it on, the wall brush runs around, painting the outside edges of the wall, pretty neat, it's got a sensor, won't fall off the table, is that cool? Now this V-Bot sells for about 90 bucks. The iRobot that I have sells for about $250. Now this will go all around your living room or whatever. It actually will clean every inch of your house uh, until it dies. You have to shut the power off on this one, plug it in. The wall off, I have to drag it back up. Pretty neat, huh? This uses virtually nothing to operate. The iRobot that I've got has a base. And what it does before the battery dies, the iRobot will go back to its base, park itself, and recharge. It won't die. This one you have to plug into a wall outlet. And, you know, it's, it's 90 some dollars, 100 bucks. But it actually does the job. Now, if you got real thick carpeting or something, no good. 
but it's enormous difference on your electric bill using one of these. It's pretty neat. Watch, goes run into some furniture, packs up, takes off. See the little brush on the side? It'll figure out this wall and start going along your wall and it will operate all the way around the room first. And then it will zigzag back and forth. This thing will go underneath the beds, dressers. Pretty neat. You turn it on when you're leaving home, come back and your house is clean. This saves a lot of electricity. This is going to immediately start saving you money in the winter and in the summer. This is bubble wrap. That's all it is. It's used for packing. We use it here in the shop all the time. It's just got these large bubbles on it. Alright, what's the idea for the bubble wrap? You can pick this stuff up for free. Go to a furniture place. They wrap up furniture, couches, chairs, and all that sort of stuff with this bubble wrap. Now these are about one inch bubbles. That's what you want, the big bubbles. They throw this stuff away in the dumpsters all the time. So what you do, cut it to size to fit your window. Spray some water on the window, just a spray bottle. Stick it on, and you got instant savings. This thing is going to keep the uh, winter time. It's going to keep the cold air from coming through your windows, and I guarantee you, it really works. It will stop the cold air that comes through your windows in the house, which, of course, current turns your furnace on, which means you're burning up even more juice and using up your heating fuel. Now. In the summertime, stick this bubble wrap on your windows. You don't have to put all of them. It's almost transparent. You can still see through it. Now in the summertime, your air conditioner, same thing. Windows in your house, hot as hell. Cut this to fit your windows, zap it up. All of a sudden, you won't feel any heat coming through the windows at all. And your air conditioner will run a lot less. Trust me, I've did this in all the windows in my house, been doing it for years, it works. Uh, if you don't want to put it in a, a living room window where you look out, you like looking out, don't. Put it in all the other windows that you don't use. And I guarantee you that's going to cut your electric bill down. And this stuff is virtually free, or you can go pay for it. I'll show you how it works. Here's the window we're going to do. This is really easy. And to make it square, to cut my bubble wrap square, I just got a cardboard box. That's all. You can lay this on the bubble wrap and start your lines, get it nice and square before you put it up. The thing you don't want to do, you don't want that bubble wrap to come up on the wood at all because it will fall off. So you want to make sure it's, oh, just inside of the wood frame on the glass. Don't let it roll up because it will fall off. So you want 26 and a half by 19 and a half. Line, just use a black felt marker. Works best. Okay. Now remember, you want to make this a little bit under. Now I just simply cut it. Sorry. I just use a pair of scissors. Don't worry, you're going to cut into some of those bubbles. Pop them, but that's okay. Got the bubble wrap all cut. You want to put the flat side of the bubble wrap to the window. Just take a mister bottle, put some water in it, and dismiss the entire glass, all the glass. Get the whole thing. Okay, that's nicely misted. Don't let it dry. There you go, just snug it up against the glass. And these bubbles are going to expand. It's hot outside right now. They're going to expand. There you go, and we're done. It's that easy. This is definitely going to cut your heating bill down a lot. Now, temperature from the glass up above, you can feel the heat coming in. And down here, you can feel nothing. This is definitely going to save you your heating. Yeah, just to show you about how transparent it is. There 
you go. You can still see through it. And it's going to stay up there stuck with that water easily. And there's a little close up. Nice, done. There you go, it's all done. Doesn't look bad at all, does it? The nice thing about this bubble wrap, unlike a lot of other women treatments, you know, the stuff you put on your glass and you take a blow dryer and heat it up and all of that, all that stuff you end up throwing away. This bubble wrap peels right off the glass, roll it up, use it next year. You can keep using it over and over and over again. You don't have to buy this stuff again. Phantom loads around your house, what are they? They're electronic appliances. They're transformers. You know the black square boxes that are on the end of several appliances that you plug into a wall outlet? Well, that little square black box is always using power, whether you're using the item it's hooked up to or not. Those are called phantom loads. Uh, the digital display in your uh, microwave is always using power. Um, I have a microwave that's running 20 watts all the time. Used or not used, I mean not used, it is taking 20 watts. It's as if you're turning a one light bulb on in your house and leaving it on 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. That's what that microwave is using. So, what you want to do is identify all of the phantom loads. Now this item right here is fantastic. I have sold tons of these and well you can buy them anywhere. I'm not trying to sell you one. Uh, it's a kilowatt meter. And what it does is plugs into your wall outlet, you plug in your appliance to it, and it will give you the usage of that appliance. It will tell you exactly what that appliance is using, how many watts, how many volts, and how many amps that appliance is using. You'll be amazed. You buy one of these things, take it around your house, unplug your television set, plug this into the wall outlet, plug your TV back in, and you'll be surprised, your TV is sitting there drawing 15 watts. It's called a startup circuit, warm-up circuit, in a lot of television sets. And what that circuit is designed to do is be in ready mode all the time. So when you hit the power button on your television set, you have an instant on. Well, most of the TVs that have that, and I used to be a TV repairman. I had a television uh, shop. Um, that power circuit is using power all the time just so you can get your TV on within seconds of hitting the power button. Plug this into a wall outlet, plug your TV in, see what it's drawing. If it's drawing 15 watts, unplug your television set. Okay, do this with your microwave. Plug in your refrigerator, um, everything in your house, and you will see what it's using. Okay, well say you've got a lot of components hooked up, like I do at my house. i got my TV, um, VCR, or DVD player like that, and I have it all plugged into a power strip. I flip the switch off on the power switch, or power strip, or we're not using any of that stuff, and I'm saving electricity. And it doesn't hurt your TV, it doesn't hurt your DVD player. If you got an old VCR, it doesn't hurt any of that stuff. But most of that equipment is using electricity all the time. And you wonder why is your electric bill so big? No matter what you do, you can't get it down. It's a lot of it is these phantom loads. Hook up a power strip. When you're not using your microwave, you say you're not even using it for days. Unplug it. Our television set, or I mean our washing machine for instance, had a digital display. That washing machine was using 15 or 20 watts, I don't quite remember, all the time, just sitting dead. So my wife started unplugging the washing machine. She says, heck, I'm not even going to do laundry for three or four days. But there it sits. Add up the phantom loads and what you've got is basically several lights turned on in your house 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Doesn't hurt them a bit. Okay, this is a really tiny uh, microwave we just use in the store and I've got the kilowatt meter plugged into it just plugged it into an outlet and let's see what it's using it's using 1.9 actually it's using 2 watts there you go it's using 2 watts now 
you notice there's an amp. There's the wattage. Push watts. Okay. There we go. It's using actually 2.4 watts. Amps, just 0 0.02, hardly anything at all. You want to see the out. This outlet is 123 volts. You can even use the Hertz button on it. 60 Hertz. There you go, back to the microwave. This is what it's using off. Two watts all the time. Just add these up and it makes a difference. All right, now we're on ceiling fans. In the summertime, looking up at the ceiling fan, it turns counterclockwise. In the wintertime, if you're looking from the floor up, it turns clockwise. And in the summertime, we keep it on uh, like the second speed. Uh, most everybody sets their ceiling fans for the wrong speed. So, remember, counterclockwise for the summertime, and usually on low, that's one, or the medium speed. Something else, get the biggest ceiling fan that you can purchase. Don't be cheap, don't buy the little fans, don't buy the three blade fans, they're junk. They won't do anything for you. Get a 52 inch fan. I usually get Hunter ceiling fans. Uh, for my whole house, they make no noise whatsoever and they don't vibrate. And a ceiling fan is going to save you a huge amount of money on heating and cooling if you use the ceiling fan right. And most people don't know which direction they turn in, or are supposed to turn in. So, I have done this. I have taken the switch on the ceiling fan so nobody can make a mistake. The W stands for winter and the S stands for summer. Okay, so this is the idea. It's winter time right now, we'll say. I have the fan looking from the floor up, turning clockwise. Once you figure that out, put the W on the switch. I have it set for low, not medium or high. In the winter time, I keep my ceiling fans on low all the time. Going any faster will cool off the air in your house. And I see this happen all the time. So what's happening is this. The blades are pushing the hot air across your ceiling and down the wall, across the floor, out to the middle of the room, and back up to the ceiling fan. They're drawing the cold air from the floor back up into the ceiling fan. And most of the heat in your room is trapped at the ceiling. You don't want to use the summertime setting and turn the blades in reverse. If you do, you're going to cool off that hot air from the ceiling. So the idea is, the ceiling fan will push the hot air across the ceiling to an exterior wall. That's where your window is and that's the coldest wall in your house. And it will push the hot air down that wall and actually warm it up. And it will push the cold air out into the middle of the floor back to the ceiling fan. And just the exact is opposite in the summertime for cooling. Okay, now that you know the proper use of a ceiling fan, we're going to take you to heating. And why you feel all those cold drafts in your house when your furnace shuts off. Seems like you just can't ever get cold, warm enough. And you keep turning the thermostat higher and higher and higher. Furnace comes on, everything feels good, you're nice and warm. Shuts off, all of a sudden you're getting a cold feeling or draft. Feels like a draft, but there's no drafts coming from anywhere. Well, what's happening is, there's no humidity in your air. It is very difficult, almost impossible, for the heat to hold in air where there is no humidity. The only way to get that heat to stay in the air after your furnace is shut off is to get humidity into your air. Now, people don't understand how this works, and it's done with a humidifier. And I have two humidifiers in my house. Uh, it's a little over a thousand square feet. I think it's around 1200 square feet. And I use a couple of humidifiers in the house. I keep the humidity set to 55% in the house. 
that is a beautiful temperature. Now, a lot of things are going to happen when you get the humidity correct in your house. First, get a humidifier. Keep adjusting it until you get the humidity in your house at about 55%. Get your humidity in your house to about 55%. When your furnace shuts off, the cold air is not going to be happening. You're going to feel nice and comfortable no matter where you walk in your house. No more cold drafts. The humidity in the air is holding the heat after the furnace shuts off. Now, when you've got extremely dry air in your house, and we used to live in Arizona, very dry air out there. When that furnace shuts off, within 10 minutes, it was back on. The air is so dry, uh, no humidity in it just wouldn't hold the heat. So as soon as it's off, heat's gone. Now, we got a humidifier in our house, got it up to 55%. The furnace would come on, shut off, wouldn't come back on for 35 minutes. Now that is one hell of an electric bill reduction right there. This is what I'm doing. I'm trying to get your electric bill down, cut it to 50%, even 30%. And it's really easy to do. And I mean, a lot of people have done it. I'd done this video before, and it was lost. It was taken down. So this is a remake of that original video. And since then, I've gotten tons and tons of emails that said I couldn't believe it, man. I mean, our electric bill has been cut 30%. That was the average. 30% is quite a bit. Say, if you've got a $500 a month electric bill, and there's a lot of people that do. Now I'll show you a humidifier. Okay, here we go. This is a standard humidifier. And this humidifier right here, do 800 square feet easy. Pretty simple. Front open, you fill this one with water. It's about five gallons of water you put into it. A couple of filters down there. Okay, and here's the controls. We usually leave ours on medium all the time. This one has two fans. You can have one run fan, one. You can use one fan, or you can use both. Now this is typically where I set my dial. Here'd be the minimum amount of humidity and the maximum. And I usually leave it right here, three quarters of the way up. And that turns out to be about 55% in the house. Well, there you go. I have several more parts of this how to cut your electric bill in half free ideas. So I'll be covering appliances, how to set your water heater, I mean getting your refrigerator set right, cleaning it, make sure that all of your appliances are working properly so that they cut your electric bill. If your appliances aren't working correctly, trust me, they're going to eat up your electric bill. So there'll be several parts. This is part one of how to cut your electric bill in half free ideas. And I'm Jeff at Missouri Wind and Solar and stay tuned I'll have part two out pretty soon. Thanks everyone.